So while Snubs is helping me out here, let me paint you guys the scenario. It's Joe, our sysadmin. And Joe, our sysadmin, he just set up a, a new Windows server. And his boss, like many bosses before him, want him to be available off hours in case of any kind of emergency. We're not going to get into the whole overtime pay thing. Now, to make his life a little easier, Joe decided to open some ports in the office firewall to give him access to the remote desktop feature while he's at home. Well, Joe is confident about his Windows Box's security. You see, he's got automatic updates turned on, and he's picked a pretty good password. It's ridiculous. No, I mean, it's R exclamation point, D exclamation point, C U 1 0 U 5. Ridiculous. Well, then out of nowhere, Pineapple and Evil servers show up, and they fire up Nmap, and they look around for anything on port 3389, and then they see Joe's server, and then they fire up TS Grinder, an online terminal service brute forcing tool, and then they use the dash delete option with a really big dictionary file, and they point it at Joe's server, and then Pineapple has a whiskey sour, and then he passes out, and Evil server does all the dirty work, and since the brute force attack takes place over an encrypted RDP connection, any would-be intrusion detection systems don't notice. And since TS Grinder disconnects after five failed attempts, nothing is written to the event log. So Joe doesn't even know. Well, eventually Evil Server gets in and Pineapple maliciously defaces his Windows wallpaper with a rude comment about Joe's mom. Now, without getting too detailed into an already pretty simple hack, let's just take that for what it is and start talking about countermeasures. Now keep in mind, I'm using Windows Terminal Services here as an example, and this, could, it, this theory really applies to just about anything uh, online that you can brute force. So um, as far as the Windows Server is concerned, there's a couple of little techniques that we can use here to reduce the effectiveness and the likelihood of this uh, attack taking place. Now on our Windows uh, Server, the first thing that we're going to want to do is come in here and re uh, rename the administrator account. Um, the administrator account, by default, has access to, uh, re to terminal services, to uh, you know, remote desktop. And uh, we're going to want to change that to something else. So I actually have a script here. It's a pretty simple Visual Basic script that we can just go ahead and uh, call from the command prompt with Cscript. And what it's going to do is rename the local administrator account from uh, administrator to Tina Fey is hot, because most hackers don't try to use that as the username that they log in from. Uh, we, I have links in the show notes to do the same exact thing with a domain administrator account. Uh, I just don't have a domain server set up right here that I can uh, walk you through it. But get links for that. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to review our password best practices. And I've got some links in the show notes to that. And I also want to bring up this great website called passwordmeter.com. I know we talked about it in episode th season three, episode nine. And it's a great site that's going to help you um, test the strength of your password. So again, you're going to want more than 14 characters just for the whole you know, LM hash dealy. But uh, you also want something with lots of numbers and letters and characters and whatnot. So next thing we need to do is enable complex passwords. We can do that here with a little tool called PassProp. OK, so we're going to run PassProp and see what it gives us. Now we've got. The, if you just run pass props without the uh, slash question mark, it's going to let you know, let's see, uh, passwords can be simple. The administrator account may not be locked out. That's what we want to change. Uh, so we're going to do pass prop with slash complex. And that's going to force complex passwords. And then we're going to go back and do it with slash admin lockout. What that means is, by default, Windows Server l does not lock out the administrator account if it has too many failed attempts. It does this for most other users, and this is set up in your policies, but the administrator account is kind of like a wild card here, right? Well, setting this allows the administrator account to be locked out if too many failed attempts are done remotely. It does not do anything for at the actual keyboard. Physical security is a totally another topic that we could talk about. There's fun things you can do with USB uh, brute forcing that, uh, that emulates a keyboard. I'm not going to get into that now. But you're not going to need to worry if you enable this uh, and you, you beef up your password a couple of times. You're still going to have all the attempts you want physically at the keyboard. OK, so then what we want to do, and, and this is something that I do, but you don't have to. This is really a security through obscurity thing, just like changing 
it to, uh, from administrator to Tina Fey is hot, is security through obscurity. We want to go here into the H key uh, local machine and under uh, system current control set control and then terminal server, you'll find the Windows, uh, I'm sorry, the Win stations and RDP TCP folders. And in there, there is a, um, there is a D word here called port number. And that port number by default is, um, is, the, is 3389. And that's exactly what Evil Server and Pineapple did, was they just end mapped for that port and they found this server. This is not foolproof. There is a program called um, Probe TS that uh, will basically probe a, um, a Windows server to see if it has terminal services running. You can do the same thing with NMAP, really. But, um, but it, it is going to help you a little bit to just obscurify that a bit. The next thing is to enable uh, extensive auditing. I have links to that in the show notes since this is a uh, domain, not a domain controller. It's a little bit more difficult to demonstrate it for you guys. But basically, what we want to do is uh, tell it to give us um, give us some information in the event log on failed access attempts, right? So, no, thank you. Um, that's really? Really? All right, e eat it at your own risk. No, but thank you. It would denial of service, come on. <laughs> so, um, that's another, th another thing. That's a, that's a topic for another night. Anyway, um, so the, the enabling ex extensive auditing is basically going to allow us to uh, see um, failed logon attempts in our event viewer. Uh, there are a couple of programs that I recommend that I will have links to the show notes for so that you can actually see like, you know, when, when these things have been happening and even alert you like, hey, you know, you're getting, you know, thousands of attempts on your, your, your FTP, your terminal service, whatever. Because if you see here, I go ahead and I try like more than five times. And on the sixth time here to try to log in to re, uh, through remote access, the, through the remote desktop, what's going to happen is uh, in my event viewer under system, I'm going to see... Uh, an event ID uh, t uh, 1012, and that is remote session from client exceeded the maximum uh, failed login attempts, right? And was first uh, forcibly terminated. That is the only indication you get by default that somebody's trying to brute force your uh, remote desktop, your, your terminal services. That's it by default. So you want to enable the advanced login features and you might want to look into getting some programs that will alert you when something like that has happened. And then finally, the best thing that you could possibly do to limit your exposure to an online brute force attempt on remote access, or I'm sorry, why do I keep saying that? Remote desktop is to not leave your remote desktop uh, service open to the world. Um, we've talked about in the past how to tunnel VNC traffic over something like SSH. You can do the same thing with any protocol, any port. So if you just leave one SSH server running on your network, you can get to anything else you want. Uh, so that's a more advanced topic. I'll have some links that'll help you out in the show notes if you need to start doing that right now. And let me know if you'd like to see something about that because I can whip up a dish for SSH tunneling. All right, I hope that was informative. We're gonna check on the uh, chicken here a little later on in the show and um, and send me some love because I'm not feeling good, all right? All right, take care, guys.